I'm going to review a good game for once. Yeah, now don't worry, I'll go back to torture myself with shitty ones, but for now, let's do something awesome. Super Mario Bros. 3 is often considered to be the greatest game on the NES, and for good reasons. It took everything that made the first Mario great and multiplied it several times over, adding new intricate levels of gameplay and challenges. Whether it's the top loader or that classic gray box, the Nintendo Entertainment System was at the height of its popularity when this masterpiece came along to push it over the top and make an everlasting impression, the defining moment of our childhood pastime. During the final years of the 8-bit era, many other games came along like Mick Kids and Tiny Toon Adventures which tried to emulate its gameplay, its power-up system, and overall design. It was one of the first games I remember to have a strategy guide. There was also a Super Mario Bros. 3 cartoon series, even though there was no 2. That's the power that this game had. All you gotta do is say Mario 3 and anyone will go, oh yeah. Now, all the hype began before the game was even released. Most of us first heard about Mario 3 in the 1989 movie, The Wizard. An innocent little family flick, but essentially a theatrical Nintendo commercial in disguise as a feature film. There's eight worlds, each with a different theme. Desert, snow, sky, and my favorite is the one where everything's giant. Slide through a bunch of bad guys, oh, that's so much fun. The two-player game has a perfect balance. It's where you can either work together to complete the game, or just compete for items and race each other to the end. Or you could die deliberately so that the other player will have to play the hard levels. There's card games, puzzle games, and even a bonus stage where you can play the original Mario Bros. Arcade. Again, this offers many possibilities to be an asshole toward the other player. What about the power-ups? You also have a frog suit that swims a lot easier, you got a hammer suit which throws hammers, and a tanuki suit that turns into a statue. I don't know what that's about. I mean, I know you use it to protect yourself from enemies, but man, what kind of crack were they smoking? But the really cool thing is that you can save these power-ups and use them whenever you need them. Like before the start of the level, you might think, eh, it's time to break out the frog suit. The enemies in the game are out of control. You got these Goombas hopping around in wind-up boots. Then you got an angry son, Big Bertha, and nuclear waffles. Not to mention, you gotta fight all the Koopa kids and beat Bowser at the end. Alright, going through the pipes. Oh, wait. Oh. Bullshit! What a bunch of fucking bullshit! Come on, you piece of shit! Come on, move your ass! Hey, how do I get this flower right here? I don't know, I'm just gonna try to... Uh, come on! Yeah, alright. This game's tricky-dicky. It's pretty damn hard, too. Then there's this part where the only way to reach the goal is to fly in the air while holding a Koopa shell and break all the blocks. Who would even think to go up there? Especially when you get to the last world, it can get real challenging. This part doesn't fuck around. It's like, you got to the end, you dare to play, welcome to hell. That's what it looks like. All this fire and skulls, it looks like hell. There's sort of like a heart shape around it. Yeah, a heart around hell. Does that mean that this game loves hell? This game worships the devil. Oh my god, of course it does. Why is there so many inverted crosses? What's the H stand for? Hell? How about the part with the tarot cards? The N, Necronomicon? The P must be Possession. Or maybe Pentagram. Well, of course, the Pentagram makes an appearance everywhere. It's no doubt that the Seven Sons of Bowser represent the Seven Deadly Sins. You kneel before Satan on the block, and after six seconds, you fall through. There's six arrows on the Possession Meter, and to reach the goal, you go in the sixth door. That's 666. Everywhere you look, it's the number of the beast. In The Wizard, the game's introduction is basically the gates of hell opening. I'm up here, my little beauties. Shit! 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 Yeah, video Armageddon. The devil watches you through the whole game. The clouds have eyes, the hills have eyes. <laughs> yeah, literally, the hills have eyes. Thanks heaven, and we know that there's no need to thank heaven unless there's the presence of hell. There's eight worlds. In the eighth world, there's five spaces you can stand on where giant hands drag you down to your doom. There's 12 tanks you gotta jump on before the goal, and it takes me 12 jumps to get Bowser to fall down the hole. The eighth letter of the alphabet is H, five equals E, 12 equals L. What's that spell? Hell! And what's it sound like when you play the game backwards? This game's a product of the fucking devil. And none of the other Mario games are like that, so I don't know why it's only this one, but 
In conclusion, all I can say is that, other than being the total epitome of evil, Super Mario Bros. 3, it's a good game. So good it's a sin. Yeah, mother. Oh my. God, it's a possessed NES. Your mother sucks cocks in hell. The fuck did you just say? I said, your mother sucks cocks in hell. Oh! Oh. Go back to hell, you evil motherfucker! Shove it up your ass, you motherfucking cocksucker! The power of Christ compels you! What an excellent fucking day for an exorcism. The power of Christ compels uh, you! The power of Christ compels you! Yeah, fuck your mother! The power of Super Mega Death Christ compels you! Fuckers! Fuckers! I've seen my back was Yeah, Super Mega Death Christ 2000 BC version 4.0 beta, bitch! Fuckers! Fuckers! Holy shit! What's that fucking language? <laughs> Fuckers! Shit. I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> <laughs> 